Welcome everybody to today's uh, healing service here at Crowhurst Christian Healing Center. My name's David Mayhew. I'm one of the chaplains. And it's great to have you here wherever you are listening or watching this. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord meet you. May the Lord encounter you. May the Lord meet you at your deepest point of need. Um, just uh, something I read, um, actually a couple of days ago, I read about a businessman who went to visit a rabbi and uh, he, he knocked on the door, came in and um, and uh, was amazed to see there were so little furniture, so much, so little furniture, so little furnishings all around. Uh, his place was almost empty. So he said, Rabbi, well, how are you? Rabbi said, I'm fine. And the businessman was a little bit perplexed because there wasn't much stuff uh, in his house, well, but uh, Rabbi, how are you? Said, I'm fine. But the business, miss, businessman just didn't know what to, to say, but you know, where's all your possessions, your furnishings, your all your stuff? The Rabbi replied, well, where's, where are all your furnishings and where's all your furniture? Where's all your stuff? Well, I'm, I'm just uh, passing, I haven't got it with me, I'm just passing through. And the Rabbi said, well, I'm also just passing through. And uh, that's very true, isn't it? We're, we're on a journey in life and uh, we don't know always what life will throw uh, at us. But we do know the Lord is with us and whatever we go through, he encounters us, he meets with us as we turn our hearts to him, as we decide to follow him. He is so much there. Um, in fact, this is uh, a period of time in which the Jewish people celebrate a feast called the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, in which they celebrated and remembered the times when they were wandering uh, in the wilderness, when they specifically uh, experienced life as a journey as they left um, Egypt and wandered around the desert. And so um, and obviously they had to live in tents and everything else. Um, but uh, this is the time the Jewish people celebrate this Feast of Tabernacles to remember that life is a journey, and on this journey, God meets us. And that's just a wonderful thing. So the Jewish people have been doing it for the last six days, and I believe they do it until uh, tomorrow night, Friday evening um, at uh, sundown. So it just seems appropriate that we would look at life being a journey and how God meets us, and look at an example uh, from the Old Testament, of, in fact, from those wanderings, in Exodus, in which God met his people. So would you walk with me and let's see what God would say to us. But first, let's just uh, look at a psalm uh, of uh, how God set the people of Israel free and how he also sets us free. That's the first step in our journey, isn't it? Coming to know the Lord, coming to know his salvation, putting our hand in his hand submitting our lives to him uh, to say that he, you, you, Jesus, you, God, are my Lord. I want to follow you wherever you may lead me. And this is one of the Psalms, one of the Halal Psalms that, the again, the Jewish people would um, recite during this time. And it's a wonderful Psalm. So let's read it together. And it says this, Psalm 114. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of foreign language, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. And the sea looked and fled. The Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why was it, O sea, that you fled, O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you hills like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool, the hard rock into springs of water. And uh, this psalm just remembers, first of all, the first step on our journey was liberation, salvation, the people of Israel from Egypt in the Exodus. We who now know Christ the Messiah, we know his salvation. He has come to save us, to set us free, to forgive us of our sins, to take us from the dominion of darkness 
and into his kingdom of light and of love and of peace. How amazing. What a salvation. If you don't know the salvation and any of you watching this, listening to this, you don't know Christ as your saviour, put your life in his hands. He loves you. There's no other name under heaven by which we may be saved. Jesus is the one who came and died for our sins. Every bad thing. He rose again from the dead to give us new life that we can know God as Father and live a life of hope and meaning and purpose. Wonderful. Give your life to Christ if you don't know him yet. And if you do, just let's celebrate this together. This psalm is just full of joy, isn't it? It's almost, uh, it's almost childlike. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs in the face of this amazing salvation. Yes, the sea looked and fled, the Jordan River turned back. Yet the Lord led his people through the seas. And now we can know his presence and his provision. He who turns the rock into a pool, a hard rock into springs of water. So he who did something impossible, he who does impossible things to save us when we don't deserve it, he has done a great and wonderful thing. Shall we thank God for, first of all, this morning for our salvation? He has saved us. He has given us new life. Let's pray. O oh, Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus you so much loved the world, you so much loved us, that you sent your son Jesus to die for us on a cross, that if we believed and put our trust in you, you would rescue us and give us eternal life. We thank you for how you have saved us. We couldn't do it by ourselves and we can't do it by yourselves. We deserve nothing. We can't do enough works to deserve it. But you, by your grace and mercy, you extend a hand and you save us. What a great salvation. We worship you. We thank you. Lord Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Just take a moment now to worship him and thank him. What a mighty saviour. Amen. And shall we sing a song that uh, expresses that in such a lovely well, way? Uh, uh, quite an old Keith and Melody Green song. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. So let's thank him, Father. Let's thank the Son for his great work and he leaves his spirit till the work is done. There is our Redeemer. <laughs>
salvation we have. Thank you, God. But let's uh, this morning uh, look at some scriptures, um, some of the scriptures that are uh, commemorated really during this Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Booths, when the people of Israel um, journeyed through the desert for 40 years. Um, as we know, many um, folks in Israel and those who follow around the world who follow the Jewish religion actually um, uh, make temporary dwellings, booths, tabernacles outside, outside the, the solidity and the comfort of four walls. And they dwell in them for these seven days, for this week. Uh, it's quite a, must be quite a, a challenge. And they just put um, evergreen branches as roofs. It doesn't, doesn't kind of hold out the elements completely. But um, it's just a, a moment to remember that life is not fixed. Uh, we are on a journey. Um, uh, some things are precarious. Some things are not easy. Some things are not comfortable. But uh, in all of it, God is faithful and he is there. And that's an encouragement to trust in him. So shall we look at one of the episodes in the life of the people of Israel from Exodus 17 on their journey? So it's Exodus 17, verses 1 to 7. And so let's look at the first verse. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, travelling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. And so they've, uh, they've been liberated from Egypt and now they're travelling through this desert, travelling from place to place, as the scripture says. And that's what life is, isn't it, really? So many times it's travelling from place to place. Colleen and myself, we've frequently moved house and even countries in our service and ministry uh, to the Lord. And But many of you perhaps uh, haven't. But life is a journey inside, uh, in, our, in our hearts, in our spirits, and um, the Lord challenges us to new things, to move out into new things, new places, um, and, to, and to see if we will trust him in that. And if we do, we will grow. So this people of God, they did travel from uh, place to place. Numbers chapter 33 says they, they moved to at least 40 different places before they entered into the promised land. Quite, a, quite an upheaval, 40 different times. And then they were in the desert of Sin or, or Sinai. And uh, as we can imagine a desert, in a desert there are no comforts. Everything's a bit of a battle even to get food and water. It's easy to be thirsty and hungry. And then at times the weather must seem relentless. Yesterday is the same as today. And this must go on for a long time. Uh, they camped at Rephidim, which is a... Um, considered to be um, a place of a wadi, um, sort of a ravine that fills with water at certain times of the year, and in other times there is no water. So again, it's precarious, you know, is there going to be water? Are we going to have enough in this wilderness, in this difficult place? And uh, we read that they had no water. Actually, this wadi did not have water. 
They were seriously in a wilderness. They were on this journey and they did not know if they would have enough to drink. I don't know how you feel. Do you feel you're in a wilderness, a dry place today? Will God provide? Do you feel that at times? Let's uh, look at what happens in verse 2. So they quarrelled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses replied, well, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? And what did they do when they didn't have water? Well, they blamed Moses. That's, that's easy, isn't it? That's the easy thing to do when things aren't going well. We blame others around us, perhaps. We blame our circumstances. We just blame others. And uh, that's what this people did. And what were they really doing? They were putting what's called putting God to the test. Now, it's, uh, it's OK to bring our needs to God. It's OK to question him. It's OK to bring our fr frustrations to the Lord. Um, this is all that the Lord is, is very, very happy we do. We come to him in honesty. Even some of the pro pro prophets, Habakkuk, ask the question, why? And so it's OK to be honest with the Lord and to bring our frustrations. He loves that. He's a good father. We can come to him with all the stuff that's going on. But uh, the issue really is that there was like a bitter kind of questioning. It, this frustration was from a bitter heart. It's almost like demanding, now where, where, is the, where is the water? Where, where are you, God? It sort of reminds me of Jesus in the desert and, and Satan tempted Jesus, it says in Luke chapter four. And if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread. If you're the son of God, you know, to throw yourself off this pinnacle and the angels will cap, uh, catch you. It's like almost like demanding a miracle. You know, this is what you're supposed to do, God. If And if you don't turn up now, um, you know, you're, you're, you're not the God of love that you say you are. It, it's, it's just kind of just this churning, this almost like bitter, cynical heart, almost like demanding God for a miracle now instead of kind of that open hearted trust. That's what the people of Israel we're doing in their hearts. And in verse three, but the people were thirsty for water there, sure. And they grumbled against Moses and they said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us and our children and our livestock die of thirst? Yes, it's okay to, uh, to say why. Um, but uh, just out of this bitter kind of un unbelieving heart, wanting God to be at their beckon call and he needs to jump to it now or else that is the kind of grumbling that is kind of putting God to the test that is not a heart of faith or of trust but uh, how should we deal with life when life seems tough when it is a wilderness when it seems dry and we feel thirsty and you know how are we going to how is how is God going to provide? Maybe this is a tough time, um, maybe even financially or emotionally or relationship issues going on and we just feel it's, it's, it is a, a barren, dry land. How, how should we react? How can we meet with God in a, in a way that would please him and trust, in a trusting way? Well, in verse 4, uh, we begin to see what Moses does. Verse four then, then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They're almost ready to stone him. So Moses is genuinely frustrated, he's exasperated, and it's okay to bring that uh, to the Lord. But the, the lovely thing is, the first step really when things are going, when difficult, when things are dry, is to bring our needs and requests and crisis to God. That's what Moses did. He didn't shy away from it. He didn't think, oh, God won't hear, won't listen, doesn't care. He does care. And so God, so Moses did bring his needs, his request, his existential crisis to God. And at verse 5, and the Lord answered Moses, walk on ahead of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile. And go. I think there's three things here. 
walk on ahead. Take uh, walk on ahead of the people, it says, yes. Go on and just leave all the grumbling and the of the people around you and walk on ahead and meet with me. The Lord just invites us to come to him. Uh, you know, if we don't come to him for refreshment, we won't be refreshed. You know, if we're just in the middle of all the grumbles and the frustrations. But the Lord invites us, first of all, to walk on ahead and go and meet with him. Yes, I'm going to meet with you. I'm going to take time out, whatever it is, uh, an hour or, or a day or half a day or go somewhere and meet with you and pour out my heart to you. Walk on ahead, spend time with God. That's uh, the second thing that Moses does. Then it says, take some of the elders with you. Who are the elders? Well, obviously, folks that are mature, perhaps been through a few things in their time. And it's good just to, to gain from the experience and the testimony of men and women of faith. And this word of God itself, it's full of that. We can We can just dig into the word of God and Look at lives, people like Moses himself and others who struggled and uh, all the disciples, they all struggled. And just to get into the word and find out how others have reacted. It's just great to read also about testimonies of how people have gone through really difficult times and met with God and found God faithful. And to read Christian books, uh, every time I read a Christian book, I think, well, what am I going to get out of this one? But there's always some nugget. There's always something to to help me, to nourish me, to refresh me. And maybe the Lord would lead you just to that book, maybe a book of the Bible, maybe a book written by one of his people that would just share nuggets, help uh, to your soul during this time. And then the Lord says, take the staff with which you struck the Nile. It's like that's the, the staff with which miracles were done. We need to take stock and remember the miracles that God has done. He has done great things, hasn't he? He has done great things. Now remember the stuff God has done, that he has saved you, he has fed you, he has nourished you, he has saved you. He's broken into your lives when you didn't, you didn't expect it. Take the staff and remember. Then in verse 6, I will stand there before you, before, by the rock at Horeb. So strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. That's the Lord saying, I will stand there before you. The Lord is there. His presence is there. I will stand before you as you pour out your soul to me. I am the same yesterday, today and forever. I am Emmanuel, God with you. And this rock is at, at Horeb, it says. Horeb means desert or desolation. Right there, God is present to bring water, to bring nourishment, to bring refreshment. And so that's how we get to this rock in the first place. Bring it to God in honesty. Walk on ahead. Spend time alone with God. Take the elders. In other words, just, just get refreshed by the testimony of others, of mature folks, those that have been on this journey longer than us. Remember the past. Look at that staff in your hand, the miracles that God has done. But know that God stands before you and us. The people of God, people of Israel had forgotten. If you look at chapters 15, 16 and 17, in the midst of which there's this passage that we're looking at, um, that God had already provided them. Remember the, the bitter waters at Marah and uh, God provided them uh, water. And chapter 16, uh, they were hungry and, and God provided manna. He had been there. He had been providing. Sometimes in the midst of our crisis of a wilderness, we don't realise God is providing. And, and just in the previous chapter, God has provided manna, bread in the desert. Manna means, what is it? What is it? Sometimes we don't even realise what God does for us. What is it? And so six days they could go out and get manna, bread, in the morning, quails at night. And so much so that they could rest on the seventh day. They would have enough to gather on the sixth day and rest on the seventh, which speaks of the rest that God wants to give us, even in, in uh, difficult times. And so look, look at the verses before, the chapters before and after Exodus 17. You see God providing, and that's what he does. He provides 
for us. And uh, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 10, he says this amazing thing. He looks really at this very episode about the people of God, how they ate uh, um, they ate food there in the desert. And the, and the Apostle Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 30. And they drank from the spiritual rock, rock that accompanied them. And that rock was Christ. This rock that uh, poured forth water was like a symbol of Christ. And Christ is the rock that is with you, that accompanies you. You are not alone. And this Christ, this Jesus, he saved us. But on this journey, he's with us. He's the rock that accompanies us, who gives us spiritual food and spiritual drink. And Jesus himself on during the Feast of Tabernacles, many thousands of years ago in John chapter 7, he stood up on the last day of the Feast of Booths of Tabernacles and said in a loud voice, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, streams of living waters will flow from within him. And by this he meant the Spirit of God. And so the Spirit of God is here with us. Would you ask the Lord maybe to refresh you? Christ is with you. He's there, maybe in unexpected ways with manna, but he wants to fill you with his Holy Spirit, the paraclete who comes alongside you to nourish you. Be filled, be filled. If you're on that desert today, be filled, be filled today. And we might ask, well, why, why do I have to go through this? Why this kind of testing? In verse 7 it says, and Moses called the place Massa, which means testing, and Meribah, which means grumbling, because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord, saying, is, is the Lord among us or not? That's easy to think that, isn't it? And we kind of think, well, why, why do we have to go through this hard time? Why do we have to go through this kind of testing time? Well, it's hard to say it's a bit of a mystery. But one truth is, when we are tested somehow, we grow, we experience God's love, his faithfulness, our spiritual muscles get stronger. If we never exercise, we just become all a bit flabby, really, don't we? But if we exercise and it's hard and we push against something and we fight through, somehow our muscles grow strong. And the Lord wants us to grow strong. Yeah, that's what he wants us to do, to, to be mature, not, not babies in the faith. And sometimes the testing time is to increase our faith, increase our trust in him, to grow spiritual muscles, as it were, so that he can uh, do greater and greater things with him. He invites us to trust him in it. My wife, Colleen, as you know, has been through a difficult time with uh, with breast cancer and her her testimony is in a kind of, not that we question why, why it's all happened, but she just, she would say, if you talk to her, I just believe God has entrusted this with me. He has trusted me with this illness. And uh, thankfully, thankfully the Lord is, and is bringing her through it in a wonderful way. And we are so grateful. But the Lord kind of entrusts us with these things. What are we going to do with them? Are we going to keep trusting him in this, in our tent, in our booth, when it seems things aren't solid overhead, there's the evergreen branches and some of the rainwater gets in, but we can trust him and we can see he is so deeply faithful. And as we do that, we grow in him. Just uh, as we come to a close, Romans 5 really expresses it. Um, Paul says, I even rejoice in these hard times of suffering because, why? Because suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance then produces character. We grow in character as we go through this process. And then character produces hope. We just know that God is there, he's going to break through and we can trust him. And love doesn't, dis and hope produces love because love doesn't disappoint us. God has poured out his love into our hearts by his spirit. So suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, character, hope. And then we're so aware of his love poured into our hearts by his Holy Spirit. So sometimes it starts with the testing, starts with the suffering. 
So don't give up. He is there. He's the rock. He's the spiritual rock. We can, Moses struck the rock and out came water. Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ is with us, with his spirit. And he wants to open the rock and pour out fresh living water onto us. So are you in a wilderness today? Do you feel that? Let the Lord minister to you. Let the Lord refresh you. Do you need to strike a rock? Do you need to go to a place, be alone with him? Read his word. Just just, just grab hold of all that he wants to give you. Do you need to cry out for his Holy Spirit just to pour out afresh onto your life? How are you going to strike the rock, as it were, today, this morning? How are you going to receive? The Lord is there. So, Lord, as we contemplate your word together, as we contemplate the people of Israel on this journey together, Lord, help us not to come to you with a with lack of trust, with a heart that does not trust you, with a heart that is bitter or cynical, that demands that you do this this way as we see fit as we want but help us to trust you lord we come under your tent of refuge we want to trust you in this journey lord would you break open the rock and pour out your holy spirit on us to refresh us today receive his holy spirit Receive the refreshment of his Holy Spirit today. So let's come before the Lord in a song. Your love shining like the sun, pouring like the rain, refreshing me again. I receive your love. Pour over me. Let your rain flood this thirsty soul. Pour over me with with waves of love. Shall we sing that together as we open our hearts to receive what the Lord wants to give us this morning.
so here we are outside at our lovely fountain on the grounds of Crowhurst Christian Healing Centre and it's our iconic uh, water from the rock these uh, three rocks that you see as many of you will know represent the Trinity Father Son and Holy Spirit and he pours out his refreshing water onto upturned hands and hearts so let's take a moment to pray together maybe you feel that you just need refreshment from the Lord let's pray for ourselves let's pray for those that we know who need his touch let's pray also for our country so first for ourselves O oh Lord for those of us in need of refreshment those of us that need to know that you are indeed with us the rock that accompanies us those of us that feel in a wilderness Lord and just need refreshment from you thank you Lord that you are the rock you are our tent of refuge you are with us refresh your people Lord as you have promised we reach our hearts we reach out in our hearts by faith and we know that streams of living water will flow streams of the Holy Spirit so come among your people come amongst us with a mighty outpouring of your refreshment of water living water that comes from yourself of your Holy Spirit Lord we strike the rock as it were as Moses did and receive from you rivers streams of living water fill us afresh O Lord fill us to overflowing with your Holy Spirit your Holy Spirit that gives life and joy and peace and patience and gentleness and self-control and goodness and kindness fill us to overflowing with the power also that can let others know how good you are even if we're going through a wilderness fill us with your power refresh us refresh your people O Lord in Jesus name and we pray for those that we know so do feel free just to name some folks before the Lord maybe family members maybe friends who are in a wilderness situation and you know they need to come to the waters maybe to put aside critical spirits and arguing with God and just put their trust in him afresh so Lord those of our friends and families on our hearts may you be the rock that gives them streams of living water today in Jesus name we name them before you O Lord Jesus name and our country Lord and such so in need of you often not knowing what to do how to turn in our present pandemic Lord give wisdom to our leaders Lord may the shaking that is going on in our society may be difficulty even financial difficulty or health health difficulties Lord may many turn to you would you send revival to our country to the UK to all the countries of the UK and our British Isles and Europe too Lord and other countries that need you so badly America needs you and India and Peru other countries perhaps we are aware of pour your spirit out Lord may there be an almighty crying out to you
in Jesus' name. Lord, may our well be full of you this day and through this week. Fill us, O Lord. Fill us, O Lord. Amen. So may the Lord bless you, bless each one of you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his countenance on you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face to you and give you great peace for this day, for the coming week and for the journey that he has in store for us. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Breathe.